Hello. So it's uh, fall. Officially tomorrow is the first day of fall. And I've been moving my plants inside. The plants uh, I've moved inside have a nice little setup and I'll show you that uh, later in the video. But here are, well, it's my division of my um, yellow insidium. I divided it up and I had it bare root uh, for the summer. I did neglect it a lot and it's looking pretty sad. Uh, although these these new growths here look good, but the shrivelly bulbs over here, those happened as soon as I repotted it into semi-hydro. Did not take well, but the new growth here looks pretty promising. I have a little tiny bit of new growth in here as well. Um, the leaves look awful, but they're in these pots, two kind of different pot setups yet very similar. I'm really liking this one and I'll tell you about why I like it so much in a minute. This is a clay pot with the Lekka beads in a ceramic pot that's glazed um, so it holds water better. A glazed pot will not breathe like these terracotta pots so having a terracotta pot in a glazed pot is almost like having almost like having a terracotta pot in a plastic pot. Uh, this one, no, you, it's really hard to get the pot out of it. It fits so well in there, but here you are. And these pots, these ground, green pots, I have so many of them because they seem to come with all my insidiums that I get from Trader Joe's or whatever. They just have slits at the bottom. It's just a basic plastic pot. And it fits so well in the decorative pots, but it happens to fit so well in this deli container. Clear deli container, super easy to get, super cheap. Um, if you just eat some potato salad, <laughs> you'll have some. And it fits, look at that, it fits perfect in it, but it also fits perfect in decorative pots as well. But it also works really well for showing me exactly where the reservoir is, but also, I mean, because you can see where it was before, but you can adjust the reservoir. So if I feel like I'm going on vacation, I could put a lot more water in the reservoir of this plant, therefore it won't dry out as fast. And I think that is pretty cool. And I think it will work really well in the long run for these plants. And since it's such an easy thing to get a hold of, like I have so many of those green pots and those deli containers are really easy to get, you it's just basically recycling the plastic. Um, and it's kind of a little bit more like a hydro setup in a way. It's still semi, but I don't know, it's a little more leaning towards the hydro setup. And uh, we'll see how these plants do in this. Uh, now I want to show you guys where I'm keeping my orchids for the winter and the little setup I got for them. Ta-da! There they all are. <sighs> On my wall of hobbies. So with the fish tank in here, the humidity will be better. It already is better. Um, my humidity is 25 Outside, I checked it, it was 11% outside. So, this day is 25, 36. Um, that's what it's been inside for the past two days. Temperatures are kind of cooling down, but outside, the temperatures were dropping to uh, like 37 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's just getting a little too cold. And this is what I got. This is the setup I have created. There's my hospital tank where I'm medicating some angels trying to get rid of this worm. Um, but I have them there. I have some up there. I have some there. I even put the, um, the shiny mar mylar behind it. See the mirror there? Uh, to give, just to help bounce around the light more evenly. Uh, just, you know, you want to get the most out of your indoor lighting. And if you can paint your walls white, which I didn't feel like doing, because 
I'd have to paint around a lot of stuff. I put the mylar in the back, which is super shiny and reflective. And I think it'll do a good job. Uh, so it's looking good. Over here we have the paths and the frags, so they tend to stay shorter. And then we have other sh shorter plants and the taller plants, oncidiums. So it's kind of like cattleyas and smaller oncidiums up there, cattleya types, um, oncidium zygo types down here, and then frags and paths. So I kind of like how that worked out. Uh, yeah. A lot of light, but all LED. Everything's LED in my house. I'm trying to switch over all my lights to LED lights. Uh, fish tank lights, LED. Um, some of my light bulbs. I'm switching everything over to LED. It's the way to go. So, we are ready for winter time now. Oh, I didn't show you guys my new plant. Well, I had this plant and I killed it. And I found it again. And on oh, the buzzer. Oh, the new, oh, it has an, okay, so there's a new spike here. I hope it does something. And this plant, the last one I had, really didn't like too much light. So I think it'll be happy over here in the corner. But I just think it's the happiest, cutest flower. I just really like that combination. It's just so cheerful and cute. So I went and I bought it for way more than the first one. first one I got at Trader Joe's for like $8.00. And this sucker was like grocery store price, twenty something dollars. <sighs> but I really had to have it. I really missed that plant. So you know what happens like that. Oh, twinkles and bloom. I still have another spike on her. Let's do a little zoom out. Don't want to zoom too far out. Yeah. Don't want you to see my hideous, messy room. We'll just keep it at that. Nice. All right. All right, so we also moved the cacti and succulents in. They are living in a south-facing window. It's the sunniest window I have. Um, I think they'll do really well under it. I've had, I've grown them under my other south-facing window, the one that's um, actually, uh, I have succulents growing in it right now. So, uh, we'll see. And um, what else? We got these guys still in bloom. This one's been in bloom for, God, how long? Like a few months now. Uh, so is the Bolera, the second spike of the Bolera. And it's doing great. It's going to live over here. It's going to live right here in this east-facing window where the uh, I have my Brassia in here and my Melatoniopsis here. They're both going to live here. They've lived here before previously. Uh, that one, Melatoniopsis, has gotten to go into spike in the window, and so is the Brassia. And I'm pretty sure the Bolera also has gone into spike in this particular window. So this east-facing window tends to be enough light to get these guys to spike. And uh, they're really big, so I don't really have room for them under the lights. So this is their home. And then we have where I keep my succulents, also a south-facing window. And then the inside area where I keep the rest of my orchids for the How long do we have to be quiet for? Stop talking. I'm doing a voiceover. Thank you. Oh, wait. So there he is. There's our little froggy. We've been listening to him. He's been making he, lots of noises. He turns his head as he moves the pot. It's pretty cute. <laughs> He's not doing so I've got this pot for him to move into. How am going to get him out of there? Or I could just make the whole entire yard wet and then I could just release him. I dare you touch him. He touch his butt. Make him, oh, he went into it. Nice. Anything else in there? Okay. Well, I'll put him back in that shady little area. See, and this plant I was about to throw out. I don't really care about this plant, so... He'll live, he'll live there, because that's where he was, and now he's in there, so we'll see how it goes. Interesting.